Welcome back. I'm George Abernathy, the proud president of Freightways. Welcome back to Freightways Live at Home. This is our signature event, and I'm thrilled today to be joined by Judy R. McReynolds. Judy is the chairman, president, and CEO at ArcBest. Judy, thanks for doing this today. Oh, it's terrific to be here with you, George. Let me do a little bit now. We've got a little bit of time together, and I'm going to do a summary of Judy's resume, because if I did all of what Judy's accomplished over time, it would probably take up most of it. But I'm going to, I'm going to try to do a, a, a rundown a little bit for everybody. As I mentioned, Judy's the chairman, president, and CEO of ArcBest, and she's responsible for managing that multi-billion dollar logistics solutions company, which includes multiple brands, brand names, ArcBest, ABF Freight, Panther Premium Logistics, Fleet Net America, and UPAC. Since 2010, Judy has also had the post of director of ArcBest Corp and is the only member of the company's senior management who serves on the board. In 2016, Judy was elected as chairman of the board at ArcBest. She's got over 30 years of logistics and transportation experience, with 23 of them being at ArcBest. The awards and accolades are significant. Global Trade Magazine, top 10 women in logistics in the last couple of years. Women Inc., most influential corporate board of directors, recognized as the female executives advancing in the trucking industry by transport topics. I can keep going, but we've only got so much time, so I'm gonna, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna well, say thank, thank you, you again. I, oh, my, I it's, that my, very much. it's my pleasure. So I'm gonna start out with what might be an obvious question, but it's really, I think, gonna be something that you know, folks are thinking about from your perspective managing so many different business units. It's, it's not the, you know, the just LTL company that was successfully for all those years, but you're managing a lot of businesses that have visibility to how this pandemic has been impactful. What's been the biggest challenge for ArcBest during the past seven or eight months during the pandemic? Well, you know, I, I appreciate the question, and 2020 has certainly been, you know, an interesting year. It's been a year that none of us thought we would encounter. And so uh, one of the things that I'll start with is just the fact that ArcVest, uh, although we do have those different brand names, we really have evolved to be an integrated um, solutions provider. And so, you know, we've, we uh, are really focused on every uh, step of the supply chain, you know, whether it's truckload, LTL, ocean and air, ground expedite, managed, or even warehousing, um, we're bringing that together. And I think that's a really relevant point when we think about how uh, we have uh, encountered or uh, driven the organization through this pandemic. And, you know, that's been really helpful to our people. Um, we've been, you know, impacted like so many other companies uh, very quickly when this whole thing started. You know, it, it felt uh, very uh, much like a cliff whenever our customers started to close their businesses down. And we had to really make some adjustments to that. Um, now, you know, we were very focused on the safety of our people and making sure that as we were serving our customers that we were able to do that uh, and keep our people safe. But we knew we had to keep that service going. We're a company that does that in, in these disaster or upheaval type scenarios, and um, it's really important uh, to keep our people safe. But we were also challenged with you know, trying to uh, adjust our resource levels to the business volume that we had, which was, you know, another thing that we were balancing and challenged with. But then also, and I'm sure we'll talk about this more in a little bit, but, uh, you know, the, the essential businesses, um, ours included, that were still up and running and really had robust volumes you had to determine how best to serve them, make sure that you had capacity sources and you're providing good service for them because of the essential nature of their business. And so it really has been a challenging year. And, and um, you know, I just want to say how proud I am of our people. It's been amazing to see all of this come together and, uh, you know, particularly our frontline people who are really um, you know, uh, out there. I mean, I've, I've described it to others as almost patriotic, the way that they've approached, 
you know, their role and their job uh, with a lot of enthusiasm. And we really um, have appreciated, you know, the, the work that they've done. But, you know, keeping them safe, getting our resources right, making sure that we continue, you know, to serve those customers, particularly those ones with essential businesses, has been a, a challenge. But it's also been great to watch how our team has worked through that with our customers. That's really wonderful, and, and I should, uh, from Freightways and personally, a thank you to all of your essential workers that it would be, you know, we would not have gotten through 2020 as much as we have been able to get through without the drivers and the other uh, resources that companies uh, like ArcBest have been uh, providing those essential services. So. Let me um, let me take a little twist on on the pandemic as as you um, as you read about and listen to what ArcBest brings to the table for your customers. It's often decide, described as being customer obsessed. So I get that, but I think you started leading into it. How have you been able to balance that customer obsession to value? with the pandemic that's been going on for most of this year. Yeah, it's um I think interesting to think about, you know, the sometimes the the words that are used to describe what you do and I think that customer obsession is one that we're really very purposeful about. And what I mean by that is it's, you know, many companies have a focus on the customer experience, but we we try to take that a step further and really put the customer at the center of everything that we do. And when you do that, um, it impacts even the, the hiring that you do, uh, the talent that you have in the organization, how you train them, how you develop them, uh, the approach that they use in communicating with customers. And I think as, as our people have grown to do that, which many of them have been natural in that for many, many years, but you know, the effort is there to make sure everybody fully understands. And you know, we like to walk in the customer's shoes or use kind of um, an outside-in perspective rather than it being, this is our best, we deliver our services this way, customer do business with us the way we want to. We want to position ourselves as doing uh, business the way that works best for them that makes them successful with their customers, which I think is just a different um, approach. And I think in the, in the challenges of the pandemic, um, it's really worked well for us because it gets you into those partnering type relationships where you know, you're, you're deeply embedded with your customer, you understand the inner workings of their business, and you're really trying to help them facilitate uh, what works best for them. Uh, we, you know, there's a, an example uh, that I, I uh, wanted to share with you. It's about a um, medical equipment manufacturer, a customer of ours that, you know, they're no stranger to providing critical health care supplies. Um, but, you know, what, um, you know, they, they communicated with us is each step of their supply chain, you know, had to be expertly executed you know, no errors are really tolerated. And so, but what happened to them with the pandemic, just like everything else, uh, they were asked to create some new products that were gonna be, you know, helpful in assisting, you know, through, through the pandemic. And, um, you know, so that presented them with challenges. So they, they needed uh, our team to get together with their team work through these challenges, and they were working on the regulatory challenges, uh, you know, massive uh, increase in volume of their equipment that was needed, and then also working with strict timelines. So, you know, we're, we're embedding our team with their team and helping them to, to work through this. And, you know, what they said to us was, you know, we asked other logistics companies to help us with this, and the answer is, you know, no, we can't do that. There's really no way. And what I'm proud of our people for is, is they found a way. They said, we'll find a way to get this done. And, uh, you know, that's just an example, I think, of, of customer obsession and then what you can do in these kinds of environments. Uh, hopefully we won't have this again for, 
you know, anytime soon. But uh, it's just an example of how you can work together to really make a difference. Whether this is a black swan or a white swan, that's for others to decide. But I will say, it's been quite a year. I, I couldn't agree more. You, you mentioned the embedding of your people with and, and, and inside uh, with customers in and during the pandemic with all the protocols that are having to be followed and all of the elements to keep your employees safe as you described. How, how are you balancing that? And there, there must be must be a, a real focus on innovation to, to make this happen at ArcFest. Our company has been around for nearly 100 years. And, um, you know, I think when you're a company that's, that is, you know, still doing uh, uh, what we're doing for all those many years later, uh, you really um, have a, a keen focus on innovation. Um, you know, the, the critical nature of innovation in a company that's been around as long as we have is really uh, uh, something that's important and we stay focused on. What we've observed is uh, there have been, you know, uh, these capabilities that are so necessary to do business, um, you know, today, especially in the pandemic. You know, the, the uh, nature of, or the channels that customers want to do business with us in is really changing. And, you know, one of the things that we've been seeing a lot of is just the, the demand for digital capabilities that has arisen. We've been a company that has done digital business uh, for over 20 years, and that's been really uh, advantageous to us. We've um, been able to adapt uh, to the channels that customers and our capacity providers want to do business with us. Um, we have a robust digital marketing team. Uh, we do uh, numerous thousands of API, EDI type connections with our customers. And, um, you know, the, the capacity tools that we provide are digitally uh, provided as well. And, and freight matching is something that, that we're doing. So all of those things are, are uh, I think, evolutions of the way that transportation and logistics companies will be serving shippers. And, you know, if you're a company that has been doing that for some time, it comes, you know, relatively easy to you to evolve. And I think that's, you know, something that's in our nature. Um, you know, an example, a great example of, of uh, I think, an innovation at work is our LTL transactional business that's been so successful this year. Um, it uh, is, is quick responsive to the quotes that our shippers, uh, you know, are, are desiring. It gives them pricing that's appropriate for them. Um, it also, in, inside our company, helps uh, us with empty capacity, you know, that we might have had. And uh, so there's a win-win for the customer and for uh, the, the work that we do inside the asset-based network. And all of that is uh, very digitally driven. It, it allows customers to get up and running with us without having to have published pricing. Um, and then there's numerous other examples, you know, for instance, just providing basic documents that uh, shippers need, whether it's, you know, a, a, a bill of lading or proof of delivery, you know, just doing those kinds of things uh, without human intervention is something that is happening regularly today. So anyway, those are some examples of, of how this environment has really accelerated. You know, I think the adoption of some of those tools and the, the amount of transactions that's in these channels. I think that's a, I think that's a great point uh, that, um, you know, the necessity for your customers to be able to work with you through that digital capabilities, those digital capabilities has really been, you know, pulled forward from where it may have been in a couple of years because of the necessity uh, to do that. So technology is obviously, and you know, I, I uh, think I know the company really well and your company really well and understand that, you know, evolution of what data has, has brought to you, what digitization has brought to you. And, and, and really allowed for the company to succeed and thrive. So technology is a key and critical component to how 
ArcBest will continue to evolve, isn't it? It is. When, you know, it's been so interesting as our workforce has moved to a remote place, whether it's an office worker or a salesperson, you know, how our people have just picked up and began, you know, to interact in that, you know, that new way. And it's just they continue to be productive, not missed a beat. And we've been very much um, appreciative of that. But, you know, it goes back to having uh, a values driven culture, one where, you know, people know uh, that they are, you know, they, they need to be trusted. They, they value uh, that collaboration value and want to communicate well, and they know they have a responsibility there. And so that's something that I think is an advantage whenever you have to go through a time where you really shift people to a different place, but you still have at least the same expectations or maybe even higher expectations of them that, you know, they continue to stay connected. But, you know, all of that has been amazing in, um, you know, how it's unfolded and the response. But, you know, it's, it's the customers that I've encountered are, are obviously doing that same thing too. So they're trying to, you know, interact, meet you uh, in that new channel or that new environment. And we all want to be back to our, our face-to-face interactions, but everybody seems to acknowledge that this is where we are, this is what we have to do, and, and they just go about their business. And, you know, I've been really impressed by many of the things that I've seen. I, I am too. I think that's a really well said. So just a, something of, uh, of interest to me that I think will be interesting to everybody who's viewing us, 23 years at Arc Best. That really yeah. speaks volumes. But I'll bet, I'll bet there's multiple, <laughs> me, uh, multiple meetings every day that you have with your team members where you are not even close to being the longest tenured person there. And what does that say <laughs> about the, the Arc Best? Yeah the ArcBest as a company and as a family? Well, it's, it's amazing. Um, you know, what's interesting is as the years go by, I am actually starting to be one of those people that has been around, you know, for, for the, I mean, the longest. Uh, it, it's certainly true, though. If you were to go across our company, you were to, you know, whether it's walk the dock or go to one of our offices where we're doing you know, the, the more of the logistics work or ground expedite or, you know, the, the truckload brokerage, I mean, you would, you would meet a variety of ages of people, but there would always be those people that have been with our organization, you know, somewhere like 30 years, 25 to 35 years, somewhere in that range. And particularly if you were to meet some of our road drivers, they, they have been around, you know, for a while and it, it, they're great people. And it's a, it's a company that had a great culture long before I was in my role. And, um, you know, I have been uh, fortunate enough to, to be able to work with some great leaders that have helped me to continue um, that legacy, you know, that was there before my time at the company. And it's, it's a company that has really, um, I think, done a great job with that. It's certainly a company that has been through a lot of things. And I think sometimes when that's the case, you know, you, you recognize uh, the value of, of great people. And we certainly have um, our share of them, that's for sure. What a, great way to, what a great way to end this. Judy, I wanna thank you for doing this. This has been so much fun. I could go for a lot longer, but uh, I'm sure they're gonna, they're gonna pull the hook on me pretty soon. So uh, Judy McReynolds, the chair, president, and CEO of ArcBest, what a pleasure it was today, Judy. Thank you for doing this. Really appreciate all that you do in the industry and, and beyond. Thank you so much. Well, thank you, George. I really have enjoyed our time together. Thanks a bunch. And everybody, enjoy the rest of Freightways Live at home. Be well. Thank you.